Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com. In 1910, the Earth had a fever. During March of 1910, the United States and Canada were burning up, as was much of Europe. It was the warmest March on record in the United States, with an average afternoon temperature of 65 degrees Fahrenheit, which was about 10 degrees above the average since 1895. During March of 1910, almost 20% of U.S. afternoon temperature readings were over 80 degrees Fahrenheit. That was about four times the long-term average. The only other year which came close was 1907. Besides the record heat, there was also a severe drought during 1910, which led to the largest forest fires in U.S. history during August. During a 24-hour period starting on August 20th, 1910, about 3 million acres of Montana and Idaho burned up. The flames were 300 feet high. It was unlike anything we've seen in recent years. And then by October, there were massive, deadly fires in the upper Midwest. Minneapolis Tribune, October 9th, 1910. More than 250 lives toll of forest fires in Beltrami County. October 11, 1910, hundreds of settlers trapped by fire missing three days and believed dead. And the deadly forest fires left a path of desolation in Canada as well. We were having a very severe climate crisis in the year 1910. But the good news is that electric cars were perfected that year. May 9, 1910, new era in electric cars. Edison's new storage battery is cause of revolution. Short life sells thing of the past. Removes last objection to electric car used by advocates of gas. So the electric vehicle problem was solved and the vehicles themselves were quite attractive. But despite the perfection of the electric vehicle, the climate crisis continued into 1911. July 4th, 1911 was the hottest on record in the United States. According to the Boston Globe, Maine got up to 112 degrees and New Hampshire got up to 110. Thousands of people died in New England during the July 1911 heat wave. And 40,000 people died in Paris during the heat wave of 1911. But no worries, even more good news was reported by the New York Times on January 1st, 1911. Coal and wood will disappear from the earth. Coal already is dwindling alarmingly, and the most ambitious efforts of the foresters will not forestall the final obliteration of the forest. Electricity is manifestly the sole dependence of the future. By means of a simple windmill, power could be produced which would keep the homes of the far northwest at a uniform temperature of 70 degrees Fahrenheit even in the deadliest cold weather. In 1911, when they referred to the far northwest, they were referring to places like Minnesota and Wisconsin. So by 1911, they had the electric vehicle and wind generation problems solved. Except for a few minor problems, like the fact that the wind is not reliable. This graph shows wind power in the United Kingdom. On many days, they have close to zero electricity generated by wind power because the wind isn't blowing. The deadliest cold weather in the upper Midwest occurs during polar vortexes when the wind's not blowing. So it's going to be pretty difficult to keep people's houses warm with wind-powered electricity when there's no electricity available. Apparently this didn't occur to the New York Times. And 110 years later, the New York Times still hasn't figured it out. Besides being unreliable, wind power is also an environmental disaster. This is the Altamont Pass wind farm in Southern California. It kills an estimated 880 to 1300 birds of prey every year, including up to 116 golden eagles, 300 red-tailed hawks, 380 burrowing owls, and hundreds of other raptors including kestrels, falcons, vultures, and other owl species. Wind farms are an environmental disaster, and meanwhile, California is shutting down their last nuclear power plant. This little tiny power plant generates huge amounts of very reliable electricity. But California thinks these sort of disasters are better for the environment than nuclear power. And what about electric vehicles? They said they had the electric vehicle problem solved in 1910. There's a few minor problems with electric vehicles, like very long recharge times and the fact that they require electricity. Do we really want to run power lines through Monument Valley in order to support electric vehicle mandates? 
You can put a gas station by itself out in the middle of the desert and service it with a tanker truck. This is a much better option for the environment than running power lines through Monument Valley to support electric vehicles. The driving force behind the obsession about wind power and electric cars is superstition about climate. The climate was no better in 1910 and may well have been worse. And climate alarmists are spouting the same nonsense about electric cars as they did 112 years ago. Most dogs can be trained in a matter of hours or days, but for some reason many humans are untrainable even over a period of centuries. Toto wonders why so many humans have difficulty understanding very simple concepts. You can visit Toto, Kyrie, Caesar, Upalan, Toki on the web at realclimatescience.com.